glance, many of you might wonder what bullying has to do with dance movement therapy. Seriously, what can dance movement therapy offer a bully prevention program? Dance movement therapy is an innovative form of psychotherapy that works with the whole person, integrating movement, creative process, and verbal communication. It's based on the premise that how we hold, move, and feel in our body reflects our emotional well-being and that changes on a movement level can affect our total functioning. Dance movement therapists can do prevention work as well as therapy. Using this modality as a preventive approach to bullying entails working with the children who bully, who get bullied, and those bystanders that witness bullying to develop the body and social emotional skills to end this problem. Let me start by telling you a story to help you see this correlation. Kaylee is a 10-year-old girl who recently started at a new school. Three boys in her class regularly bully her, knocking things off her desk, tripping her, calling her names, saying derogatory things like, this school was better before you came here, or you should never have been born. At first, Kaylee wrote notes to her teacher describing the incidents. These were discussed with the class, and while it didn't end the bullying problem, it seemed to be a release valve for her. Then the jar that the teacher used for students to write notes broke and nothing replaced it. Kaylee's outlet disappeared. One day, when the children were out at recess, the teacher discovered a drawing that Kaylee had made illustrating a large girl with a small girl standing on her shoulder holding a gun to the large girl's head. The teacher went into panic mode, picturing school shootings or suicide so what is bullying? Bullying always has to do with an inequality of power, with the bully using different forms of intimidation to coerce someone else. This power differential can be physical, someone bigger or stronger than you, or can be relational, someone that affects your self-esteem or your popularity. In this case, the three boys outnumbered Kaylee, threatening both her bodily safety and her emotional well-being. In addition, because she was new to the school, she had no friends yet to support her. Picture yourself dealing with a type of bullying that Kaylee faced each and every day at school. What impact would it have on your body? What would happen to your breathing? Would it get faster, slower, deeper, more shallow? How about your chest and your shoulders? Would they tighten, shrink back, rise up? How about your stomach, your face, your hands, your feet? Really try to imagine that you are Kaylee and feel what your body would feel like. The impact of regular bullying is serious. It affects relationships, body concept, self-image. It can keep a child from succeeding in school, stunting their ability to learn. It can have lifelong consequences, such as serious depression or even suicide. It can change a person's concept of a healthy relationship, equating pain and abuse as an expected part of the equation. When questioned, Kaylee told everyone that she had no access to guns and no intention of shooting herself or anyone else, but she felt so upset about the bullying that at times she wished she were dead. The school was desperate to do something about this, but talking to and punishing the boys had had no effect. I was called because I had worked with this family in the past and had extensive experience working with bullying. I told the school I would be willing to work with Kaylee and her class if they would do two things. First, institute a weekly lunch bunch for Kaylee where she could invite children from her class to eat with her either in the counselor's office or the classroom so she could make friends to support her. The school instituted this right away. Two, I asked them to facilitate empathy training with the boys who were bullying. The school was not sure how to do this. Empathy training is something dance movement therapists are uniquely qualified to do because it begins to develop on a body level first. Empathy is the ability to feel what other people are feeling. It begins in infancy when a caregiver matches the sounds, rhythms, and movements that the baby initiates. Matching someone's energy, rhythm, and movement quality allows them to feel seen, heard, and accepted on an immediate embodied level. 
When I work with this on a body level, I start by having children mirror each other, with the goal being that they match each other's movements so closely that I can't tell who's leading and who's following. We might also do um, matched pushing and breathing, with the goal being to match strength and length of breath. After several exercises to help the children become more sensitive to each other, we explore how do you show someone you care? I might also challenge the children who bully by asking them things like, how would you feel if someone said or did this to your mother? What are the body skills necessary to end bullying? First, spatial awareness, which entails the ability to move through different spatial environments safely, read body cues related to your own spatial needs, and to respect other people's spatial needs. Two, self-regulation. That entails the ability to read the body cues that alert you to when you're getting excited or agitated and having the skills to calm yourself down. Three, awareness of and response to tense or dangerous situations. This involves the ability to move from an awareness of inner sensations and outer events or to move between an inner and outer focus. Four, self-assertion, the ability to stand and act strong, serious, and confident, even when you don't feel that way. Five, creating surprise to change the mood of an interaction, using your voice, face, body, and movement to do one of the many unexpected interventions possible in a bullying or aggressive situation. Six, developing empathy, this is a very important skill to teach or to work on with children who bully, because if you can get them to feel the pain they're gonna cause someone else, it can act as a stop guard to causing it. Seven, managing anger and other intense feelings safely. And eight, dealing with prejudice, cultural, and racial differences. Let's look back at what happened with Kaylee. I met with her and her mom, and we worked on or discussed Kaylee's feelings about the bullying. I then asked her to use the props in the room to build a sculpture that would represent those feelings. The sculpture was bigger than she was, and she described it as huge with jagged edges. Then I asked her to move in response to the sculpture. She came in closer to it. She moved further away. She approached it from different angles. She even moved with her back turned to it. She threw things and pulled it down one piece at a time until it was no longer bigger than she was. Her movements changed from small, timid, and tight to free and easy using strength and suddenness to throw and knock down the sculpture. We then explored things that she could do to change the dynamics with these boys. Kids that bully expect to get power from their targets. When they can't intimidate or coerce someone, they frequently don't know what to do. I started by having Kaylee try assertion, saying, stop, leave me alone. She just was not able to do it effectively. She told me that at home she was the only one that couldn't get the family dog to listen to her. While I feel that assertion was a very important skill for Kaylee, for all girls, for all children actually, to have, and one that we would continue to work with, when helping a child dealing with a bullying situation, it's very important that you have them choose something in their comfort level. And Kaylee clearly wasn't comfortable with assertion. So we tried other interventions, distracting, changing the subject, asking for help, saying we were late. We tried 15 different interventions. The one that Kaylee felt the most comfortable with was being friendly to the bullies. I was a little bit anxious with this choice because there were three boys ganging up on her, but I decided to trust her comfort level. I frequently teach these different approaches in whole class settings where each child gets to pick three to five interventions that feel most comfortable to them. It is also in whole class settings where I work with the children who might actually be doing the bullying, or those bystanders that witness the bullying and don't know what to do about it. Activating bystanders is a very important part of a bully prevention program, because there are more children who witness bullying than there are bullies or targets of bullying put together. It's when witnesses learn how to become active allies, gaining the techniques to keep themselves safe 
while taking action to stop the bullying, that real school change can be seen. In the past 20 years, I've worked with over 300 classrooms. 90% of these teachers report significant gains within their class. At this point, Kaylee had played out her feelings of fear and despair in therapy, and she felt empowered to do something. For the next week, no matter what the boys did, Kaylee acted friendly. She smiled at them. She asked them how they were. She complimented them on their running or on their schoolwork. She let them get in front of her at the water fountain. She picked things up for them. No matter what they did, she remained friendly. I believe that she was able to do this because being friendly was in her comfort level and she knew that her teacher, mother, and I were all on her side. At the end of the first week, two of the three boys started acting friendly to Kaylee. In the middle of the second week, those two boys confronted the third boy and made him stop being mean. Kaylee's persistence paid off. She ended up feeling stronger and more secure in her own ability to handle life than she had before the bullying had started. I hope that you now have a sense of the relationship between bully prevention and dance movement therapy. After working with Kaylee's class, the children became more sensitive to each other and engaged in more positive interactions as a group. One boy who used to bully said, quote, I used to start fights a lot. Now, when I feel myself getting hot and bothered or I start bumping into things, I know I'm gonna get in trouble. I do the four B's of self-control, I calm down, I don't start fights anymore, end quote. The four B's of self-control, by the way, is a neurophysiological calming technique. Kaylee's story is one that ends on a positive note. She made friends, did well in school, her bullying problem was over.